Hello everybody and I'm back to hopefully doing Makeup Mondays and today's Makeup Monday is going to be all about our new Top Shelf Mascara. Just in the last few days, a few text messages I've received says, I'm blown away. Someone else says, oh my God, this mascara is insane. <clears throat> and then someone else says, this might be the best mascara I've ever used. And then I had several messages from a lot of you it was a little clumpy, a little messy, and you just were struggling with it. So I wanted to go over some of my best mascara tips that can go with any mascara that you're currently using, but especially will apply to our new Top Shelf Mascara. You know, in my opinion, mascara is the makeup item, <clears throat> excuse me, that I have to have. It, I'm not gonna go anywhere without mascara, even if I don't put much of anything else on. Mascara is just, my, my face is just not the same. My eyes have started to droop as I've gotten older. You know, it's like a push-up bra for your face that lifts your eyes, it opens your eyes, and you know, it's, it's an instant eye lift and it just camouflages the eyelid drooping. So mascara is a must-have, and I would say 99% of my clients buy mascara and use mascara. So a couple of things about the, um, the new Top Shelf. It's a curved applicator and it does release a lot of product. And so I think that's been, if you have no eyelashes, you think you have died and gone to heaven because it immediately grabs every eyelash you have and just extends them way, way, way out there. If you have a lot of lashes, like my lashes are amazing at the moment. Um, mine are amazing because of our new lash serum. If you're not using that, you're really missing out on the best eyelashes of your life. Um, and so when I use too much product, then it looks like I have spider legs and I have a lot of clumpy mascara. Well, that's an easy fix. I know Mary Elaine, who just joined in the last um, few days, is a makeup artist and you know she had no trouble with it all. She's like, I'm used to cleaning my lashes, separating my lashes, and I'm used to cleaning off my wand. So number one, my wand is about two weeks, two and a half weeks old, and I immediately, um, after the, you know, for the first week or so, I would just clean my wand off. And so that got rid of, I don't really have any excess on my wand now at this point because it's about three, you know, going on three weeks old. Because for the first week, I cleaned off my wand. I've always done that whenever I buy dramatic mascaras because they always leave a lot of product on me and my eyelashes will clump together. So I always have cleaned my wands off. Now at this point, I can really stick it in and not get the excessive clumping that I was getting initially. So number one, just clean off your wand with a, a baby wipe or a tissue. Um, I think they've maybe put a lot of product in here, which we think is good, but I think it's coming out on some of the, the bristles. These bristles are meant to grab every single eyelash that we have, and they do that. Number two is when you do get a really dramatic mascara, is getting the little lumps and the, the not the lumps, the dots and the, the little mascara boo-boos. We have a couple of options for that. Number one, you can take a business card. You can use a plastic spoon, and that just catches all the mess so it doesn't end up on your lids. Or I have these amazing little cards that, I don't know if this company's still in business, it's called lashcard.com. But these things are amazing. There's a small side and a large side. And you literally can put this under your eye or you can put this up here. And you can be as messy as you wanna be and all the mess ends up on the card. Or you could simply take a business card and just cut it out in the shape of your eye and kind of get the same effect. But these things weren't expensive and I used the same one for a really long time. Um, and if you do make a mistake, I cannot stress enough, you've got to let it totally, you know, if you touch yourself like a little right there, you've got to completely let that dry. Don't go in and, oh my God, try to, then you, then you mess up your concealer, your foundation, everything. So let it completely dry. And then you're gonna take a Q-tip and you're just gonna simply twirl and it just releases. It comes off like magic and it won't leave any residue or greasiness on, on your um, eyes. And another thing is I always, you know, it's, it's part habit at this point, but I always powder my lashes. 
I always did that before because the powder acts like a primer and it gives your mascara something really to grab to. Well now, this mascara needs no priming. It will jump your lashes out there all on its own, but I do like to dry my lashes off. I feel like we get in a hurry. We put our skin, skin products on and we get moisturizers and creamy things on our lashes. Um, and so this sort of makes sure that we've gotten rid of anything wet on our lash by just taking you know a sponge and just getting a little powder up there so um, and then another tip that's really good and this is what my daughter's been doing and this is honestly what I've always done is I've always used a really clean mascara like our A-list y'all know how much I loved the A-list mascara as my first application because it's so clean but a lot of you don't love that it's not dramatic and most professional makeup artists always use two mascaras, one for curling and separating, and then another for drama. And that's kind of what I've always done. I've always used the A-list first, and then I would use the Intensity Stretch or some other mascara I picked up for that crazy drama if I you know, needed extra drama. Um, and another really good tip is to keep all your old wands. Take this wand, Clean it really good and use it to separate, to clean, to curl your lashes. Um, and I have wands that I actually, after I put my serum on, I like to comb my serum through my lashes as well. I don't know that that's a necessary step, but I like to do that. Okay, um, and you can also buy these applicators, which I love from Sally's. And I'm obsessed with this one in particular, with this little ball on the end. I can get right in and twirl it, and really, if I do have a little bit of mascara that's clumped up, it'll comb right through it. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump in here and just put some mascara on. So I just stuck it in, and I have a mirror. I'm old, I need to see. Um, but I'm going to show you just like with one coat, you know, no A-list first, no primer. I used to put a lot of powder on my lashes because it acted as a primer. This mascara does not need a primer. It is, I guess it's sort of like its own primer because it, you know, just that's just one coat. One coat, boom, done. So we'll go to the other side and I always bend my applicator just so ever so slightly. That way, because I have always hair in my face, always. And when it was going out there, I was constantly getting mascara right there and so like this, I'm going more from a downward angle than a sideways angle. So I come down here, need my old lady mirror, and I do like to close my eye on the wand, and I'm pretty good at not making a mess with my mascara, and I think it's because I, I do my mascara from underneath, and that's just a habit. It's what I've always done with my mascara. That's nothing new. You guys have seen me do that for a decade. Um, but I kind of curl them. It's like I am pushing my lashes up instead of putting my mascara on like that. Okay, so again, this is one coat of mascara on both eyes, no clumps, they are completely fanned out. And it's because I cleaned this applicator off, you know, really good for about the first week. And now, you know, as things get older, they'll start to dry a little bit. And so I've not had any issues with it at that point. Now come back for the bottom, and I would suggest for those of you with smaller eyes to get a smaller wand, you know, just to kind of catch the bottom lashes and just, you know, barely touch them. It doesn't, you know, really, we don't need a lot of mascara on the bottom. It's aging. It's a hard habit to break. I'm trying to back off using so much mascara underneath. But getting back to that little mascara boo-boo right there, you know, you just kind of go in and you twirl it and it just is gone. That easy. Whereas if I had went in and used the oils from my finger to smear it, right, it, all I would have done was smeared it and made a mess. And then you gotta clean all that up. Okay, I like to let this tacky up just ever so slightly, and then I will come in and add a second coat. And I cannot do more than two coats of this because my eyelashes will be ridiculous. My husband told me the other day, I had way, he asked me if I was wearing false eyelashes. He says, you have way too many eyelashes going on. And I'm like, no, I do not have on false eyelashes. And I actually put a post in my personal group 
And several people messaged me and said they didn't believe these were my eyelashes, and they are. As you can see, I went from nothing on them to the second coat, and that closing and sort of wiggling actually helps me push my lashes, you know, where I want them to go. If they were clumped, which they're not, I would come back in, you know, with a clean applicator and just gently, you know, go under them. And this is what Mary Elaine was saying that she always does with her mascara. And if I had any stuck together, now they're completely fanned out and gorgeous. Come back in here, brush this side through too. And it also helps you push them up even just a little bit more. See how I'm kind of closing and bending? It gives them that, mm, that lift. And I know for me, something I've noticed is because my hair always is over my eye, and me and my friend Kelly were talking about this recently, we always have one eye that kind of goes a little more flat and doesn't look like the other eye. And I think because this is so long and my lashes, they get the weight of my hair will start to push it down. So I've actually tried to clip my bangs back to give it time to dry. So then it won't, it won't go down anymore after that. But I've come in later in the day and just taken a clean wand and you know pushed them back up and it's almost like I put a little more mascara on, but is that not gorgeous or what? I mean, lashes for days. This mascara is the craziest thing I've ever used. Um, it took me a minute because it was a lot of product on the wand, but that is a simple fix of just cleaning off the wand. There's no fibers, it's not irritating, it's a good for you mascara. Um, and when you pair it with the L Lush and Lux, yeah, Lush and Lux, the serum is gonna replace your Latisse or your lash growing products out there on the market. Um, and then you don't sleep in your mascara ever because they separate, they stick, they break, they clump up. You're gonna have the lashes you've always wanted. You know, our cleansing oil is 40 years old. 40 years old. We had a beauty treatment oil before that was a cool thing to have. And it has seven essential oils in it, sunflower, safflower, avocado, nut, wheat germ, and vitamin E. It's so good for your eyelashes. So when you partner you know, a good eyelash remover with a lash growing serum and a crazy mascara, you guys are not gonna notice your eyelashes. You're not gonna believe that they're even yours. And if you do have a little fallout or mishap, don't forget our Look Alive. You know, a little Look Alive, I, I forget about this product, but when I add it, look at the brightness that it adds. You know, just instant. And I really prefer to use our multi-use brush with that because I can get See, up in there. Whereas with the sponge, I can't really, it's like a powder concealer that really brightens your eyes. And I would normally use like my foundation brush to kind of blend that in, but I don't have that right here. But it's almost like just highlighter for my eyes and just brightens them up and makes them look gorgeous under my eyes. So I forget about that product a lot. This mascara takes a little longer to dry. So give it just a second before you start, you know, messing with your eyeshadow or do anything, because then you'll push your lashes down or you'll stick them together. So you want to give it, just from doing that a second ago, I hit some lashes. So I would probably come back in there and, you know, make sure they're still nice and spread out before they set up and dry. This mascara sets, it dries, and it stays curled up all day long. You know, you go out to dinner this evening with your husband, you go to a party, and your lashes are going to look as good as they did when you put it on that morning. It doesn't smudge. Um, people that really struggle with mascara running under their eyes, you will get no black smudging, um, nothing from underneath it. You just have to take the time to make sure you clean off your wand and you're patient enough to come, th come through them because this mascara is meant to look like false lashes. And you're not, you know, it's like you can't have the best of all the worlds. You can't have the, the clean, you know, simple little clean mascara and still get all the drama. You know, there's gonna be a little give and take in there. So just get in there, clean off your applicator and then comb through your lashes and you will have eyelashes for days. You will love it. You will thank me or the person that you're buying your mascara from. And these tips work with um, all mascaras. Another cool little tip is, you know, if your mascara is old and dried out, you can put a little saline in there. I think this mascara is gonna last a really long time. But if you've got a mascara that you're out of town and you need to get another weekend out of it, a little few saline drops. Don't pump your wands, it pumps air down in there. Um, 
your first coat of mascara is like your primer your second's going to lengthen your lashes and if you're a waterproof girl first of all this mascara really sets up and i think it's going to be a great alternative for those of you that like waterproof because it doesn't smudge and that's the main reason most of you do that waterproof is so bad for your lashes but if you really want to use waterproof you know use a clean mascara first and then use your waterproof over it um, that way when you go to remove it it actually will come off because you have something clean underneath it but i think once you give this a try you are not going to go back to a crusty hard waterproof mascara because this is not going to smudge on you it's going to stay in place your lashes are, are going to look so ridiculous doesn't have that waterproof shoe polish smell, which is awful. And it's good for your lashes. It's got good for your ingredients in it. So check, uh, try some of these tips. Let me know how you're loving this mascara. Um, and if you have any great mascara tips to share. And go look up these little cards, um, lashcard.com. For those of you that really struggle with making a mess with mascara, I don't tend to make a mess with mine really that often, so I don't have to use these, but I do use these on my clients a lot. Um, so have a great week, everybody, and let me know your best mascara tips. Bye.